Hey guys, Jeff here from Shack Blues Vineyard. And this is the first of a bunch of videos that we're going to do um, for our staff training. Um, so you guys can learn a bit about exactly what we do. That's so different um, and so special. And that way, when you want to, you can refer back to the videos and remember everything. So one of the unique things we do is we actually run our vineyards all biodynamically and organically. And then we run sheep in the vineyard for the entire growing season. And this is one of the first vineyards that we converted here behind us. So our label is quite unique. Um, we originally were a Southern Highlands based label, but now we're based on um, grapes from any of the vineyards that we've converted and we run in the sustainable fashion like we do here with the sheep. Um, so because we're using the sheep, we're using the tractor about 60% less. And that's where the name tractorless has come from originally. But tractorless now has really become a focal point for our business because it's kind of, if we can achieve the ultimate natural sort of farming process, it means that we won't need the tractor anymore. So it's kind of, it's kind, it's come to signify our, I guess, nirvana of, of um, regenerative farming is this idea of a tractorless vineyard. So the whole process started about uh, probably about 12 years ago now, back in 2010, 2011. Uh, my background is consulting winemaking around the world. And I started wine, my own label, because, you know, when you're making wine for someone else, you can't really experiment on the wines in case it goes wrong. And I had all these great ideas that I've seen all around the world. Wanted to try different varieties with different techniques and those sorts of things. So we started this label and um, didn't have a name back then. It was just an idea to keep me interested in winemaking. And I wasn't getting the quality of fruit that I really wanted. So I really started getting involved with the vineyards and um, I'd go out to their sheds and I'd open their sheds and I'd be looking at all these chemicals going, I'm not going to touch that chemical. I don't want to be anywhere near that chemical. I don't want anything to do with that chemical. And I thought, geez, we're spraying our vineyards with this absolute toxic mess that I didn't want anything to do with. And so that's when I started It's looking around at alternate ways to manage vineyards. And I came across the biodynamic philosophy. So biodynamic philosophy came about um, over 100 years. Actually, to this, this year is the 100th anniversary of biodynamics so 2024 uh, and it came about when the industrial revolution came through europe and what happened a lot of farmers were finding they're getting a little bit more disease and they're having problems on their farm and so they went to a famous academic at the time called rudolf steiner and asked him to you know give, give his views on why it was and he came up with the biodynamic philosophy and when you read it you know these days, it seems a bit like way out there. You know, we're talking about energies and we're talking about influences of the moon and the stars and the planets. But look, for the in the essence of it, what it is is farming with the na with nature. You know, we never used to harvest the fields or plant the wheat at a set time every year. You know, when that flower was was blooming and the, that bird was singing, that's when we spread out the wheat. So. You know, we were driven by more natural sequences and natural calendar than, than our, you know, today is a Monday, the 5th of July. And that's where a lot of it is comes based from. In the really early days, we had a caterpillar problem in the vineyard. And the biodynamic philosophy says, if you have insect problems on your farm, it's because you don't have enough animals. And so we started experimenting with sheep First, we got a breed of sheep that's called a dorper. And dorpers, um, they're great. They're pretty easy to look after. They're wool shed, so I thought they would be perfect. And um, so we got a bunch of old dorpers. Well, a dorper is pretty much like a goat, and that project did not work very well. This vineyard behind me, we ate the whole vineyard. Uh, so, yeah, that wasn't a great start to, the, to, to this system. I actually grew up on a sheep farm and we had the merino farm. So next we got merinos. And one of the big differences is a dorper is what you call a, a browsing sheep, which means they kind of look everywhere for food and they'll just eat it. A merino is a grazing sheep. So they only look inside their grazing zone for food and they don't look outside of their grazing zone unless they've eaten all the food in their grazing zone. 
the merinos, they kind of worked. Um, the grapevine sat here, which was outside of their grazing zone, but the uh, bunches hung down just inside their grazing zone. And so what we did, you sort of see the remnants of it in this photo behind me, these little white wires there. So we ran these little white wires down on either side of the bunches to try and stop them from eating the grapes. And that worked quite well until um, the electricity went out and the, all the grapes got eaten in a couple of hours. And it was amazing how many um, grapes can get eaten by sheep in a few hours. So next up, we started looking around. Um, I eventually found this breed of sheep that you can see in this photo now with little black faces and they're called a Hampshire Down. Uh, they're a fairly rare, rare breed from the UK. They're a grazing sheep, the same as a Merino, but one of the biggest differences is, is that they're about two inches shorter with, than a Merino. So the bunches went from being inside their grazing zone to being outside of their grazing zone. So it means we can run these sheep around the vineyard the whole growing season. Now, since using them, we've actually found out they're even more adapted to what we want to do at the vineyard anyway. Firstly, they really hate looking up. So they can actually they can actually reach the lower leaves on the vines, but um, if they've got good food on the ground, they really won't bother. They're what we call roaming sheep. So dorpers, merinos, a lot of other varieties or breeds, they flock. And so you end up with these sheep camps and these tracks of compaction through the vineyard. Because these sheep just spread out everywhere, they're roaming, we don't have those problems with the compaction and the sheep camp. So we get this beautiful spread of all the manure and we get this beautiful spread of them eating around So and no compaction. So it's really great. So um, there have been a couple of benefits that we've seen since running the sheep. But the biggest thing is that to be organic or biodynamic, the biggest cost for running your vineyard is actually managing the grass. And now the sheep do that for us for free. So we originally tried to get the sheep because of the caterpillars, but they've actually solved all these other problems for us. And they have actually fixed the caterpillar problem. And, and the really interesting thing is, like, how does a sheep affect the caterpillar? Well, what I've done when we observe, we can see that the caterpillars lay their eggs all through these vines, but they also lay eggs all through the grass species or the broadleaf species on the ground. And the sheep eat the species on the ground and kills those eggs and so we only get the eggs hatching in the vineyard and those number of caterpillars don't cause us any problem when it's kind of in this really nice natural balance it's not like a plague problem and it was a really big aha moment for me to realize how intricate and, and perfect nature is like who would have thought that a caterpillar would affect our, um, I mean, the sheep could affect our caterpillars and, and they do. And that then has become the basis of how we run everything at our farms. If we have any sort of problem, the first thing I think of is, well, why do we have that problem? Because that problem doesn't exist in nature. So why do we have that problem? And then I go, so what do we need to do to make our place more like nature so that we don't have that problem anymore? And I can pretty much say almost 100% of the time, it comes down to biodiversity. The reason we have a problem is because we don't have another plant or we don't have another animal or we don't have the right microbes to fix that problem. So our focus really is on bringing more biodiversity into the vineyard. And I really love bringing people out to our vineyards and our sites to show them why things are so different on our, on our land. And We'll, we'll, uh, you guys will obviously see um, the vineyards at some stage, but the first thing you'll notice is we've got long grass. And I think every tourism photo, every picture you see of vineyards are like these like pristine looking vineyards of short grass. Well, it is the most unsustainable way to manage a vineyard by having short grass. Basically, if you're cutting the level of the grass down, the root systems are dying back up to the level of the cut. So you've only got a small depth through your root systems. Now that causes us all sorts of problems because a plant will photosynthesize all day and it makes all its nutrients and its sugar, well, it makes all its sugar from the sunlight. And it actually makes more than it needs. And in the nighttime, it pushes that sugar via its sap out into the soil, which feeds bacteria. Now, every plant 
creates different sugars to push out to feed different bacteria. And every set of bacteria that are fed do something really important in an environment, but it's all different. The one set of bacteria might be important for cycling carbon. Another one might be important for cycling nitrogen. Another one might be important for calcium. So without all these microbes working together, you don't have this full system feeding the plant. And without the plant, you don't have the, 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 the sunlight being captured to feed the microbes. And everything links together. Like nature is this like amazing, intricate framework. And us being humans, as we always do, we simplify it and we get it wrong. So that's our, that's our ultimate target here. Um, this is a really exciting time to be involved with Tractalus because we're about to embark on a five-year um, research project across the whole of New South Wales. We're, go we're going to be converting vineyards in every single region through our management practices. We're doing this alongside Department of Priming Industries and Charles Sturt University, and we're going to be collecting data to show why our methods are so much better for the environment, for sustainability, for regeneration. And that's really important because one of the big problems at the moment, you have all these big companies that are really excited about doing something more sustainable and doing something better for the environment. And But by law, they have to do the best thing for their short shareholders um, financially. And so without data to prove their decisions going regenerative, they can't really do it and still adhere to their legal requirements as, as a director. And there really is limited data around. And so this project will become really important because it will enable big companies like that to make decisions on like, well, we can do X, Y, Z. It's going to cost X, Y, Z. And then we're going to get this sort of benefit from it. So it's really exciting um, to be rolling that out. And the end of five years, the plan is that we're going to have a pretty much a booklet, which is which is a roadmap for regenerative and sustainable viticulture in New South Wales and even across the whole of Australia, which will be the first of its kind. And so our label will evolve a little bit alongside those vineyards as they sort of convert and start managing it the way we do, we'll actually get a little bit of grapes off all of those different vineyards. So our range will change a bit. We'll probably, you know, we might end up having four or five different Shirazes from all the different vineyards, but then we can, you know, that makes a nice tasting on its own because we can sort of taste um, all the different um, wines that come about from it. So, you know, our ultimate goal is that when you come to our cellar door down here at the moment on our main vineyard, which is the Blue Metal Vineyard in the Southern Highlands, that's the first vineyard that we're converting um, with the cellar door on the vineyard. And it's becoming our showpiece. So this is where we bring industry to show what we're doing that's different, how to do it, um, where we bring customers and, and, and people can really see what we're doing that's so different. Um, so it's exciting to have that up and rolling. But our ultimate goal is that you'll come in the cellar and, yeah, you can taste the wines, but we're also going to have the lamb that we produce from, from the sheep. We're going to have the beef from the cattle. We're going to have the pork from the pigs. You know, we, we're introducing all these animals onto the farm because they bring more biodiversity. You know, every animal eats differently. They poo differently. They attract different microbes. They attract different insects and the more we can get here the more it's like nature the more natural our balance is and you know i have this view that when we can get all our systems perfect we're not going to need the tractor anymore because we're not going to need to be spraying and we're not going to be out there all the time having to fix all these problems that we've essentially created so that's some um, tractor's vineyard and what our methodologies are and ideas are you know that's really what our brand is about um you know, the wines have sort of become a bit of a byproduct of, of our focus on these management systems and strategies in the vineyard and on farm to really regenerate viticulture and really regenerate the land. You know, um, for every 1% carbon I get extra in our soil, we're getting 170,000 litres per acre of extra holding capacity. That's massive. I mean, so that's drought resilience right there. But the other thing is, all that carbon we're capturing from the atmosphere and putting it back in the soil where it started 
to begin with. And so you can imagine if we convert if we convert millions and millions of farmers across across the world to these sort of techniques, I mean there's our there's our global carbon short problem sorted out. It's like a really exciting thing that we can do. So guys, I think that's it for this video. Um there's going to be plenty more to go through and eventually we're going to go through all the wines one by one. Feel free to get back on, go through the videos whenever you want. You know, even if you just want a little fresh up, get on and um, really get to know what we do because you know I'm passionate about this sort of regenerative, sustainable farming. And that's the message that we really want to show people. That's what we do. That's why our wines taste different because we're really focused on this way of running the vineyards. I'll see you guys soon.